Hi folks, John Dunn, RPG freelancer, publisher behind Meliorvia, and I am up here in the luxurious new studios at Immortals Inc. with Mikey. One and only. I'm not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. Just kind of a new space. But Maybe not... down the hall a little bit. Maybe a little bit. That's a little bit of a hint, so we'll just give you that. Yeah, it's not a promotion. It's a sideways move. And it's a subtle move. Yeah, what do we got today, John? Today, I thought we would talk about the Pathfinder 2nd Edition Lost Omens World Guide. Yeah, so Pathfinder's very popular game system. Second edition of it came out a few years back now in 2019. It's fantasy, which is not my main focus for RPGs, but I've been playing a lot of Starfinder lately, and a few of the people at the club where I fence have been talking up Pathfinder second edition a lot lately, so I've uh, kind of had a strong motivation to go back and look at some of it. And I got to tell you, this book really impressed me. And why does it impress you? So I wasn't real familiar with the setting, but I thought this did a fantastic job of giving an entry point for somebody who's coming into Pathfinder anew and just kind of grabbing a lot of the stuff that was already out there from Pathfinder first edition, updating it for second edition and consolidating it. So you had all those resources all in one place for a reasonable price and kind of a manageable size to go through. This kind of zooms out the scope with Pathfinder 2nd Edition, you're looking at a little larger area on the planet of Glorantha, uh, Galarian rather, than you were in 1st Edition. And this does a decent job of updating the meta plot for the stuff that passed between 1st Edition and 2nd Edition. And a lot of that is those many, many adventure paths that Paizo saw fit to publish in the time in between. Uh, I do want to mention this has a very large creative team. I don't know if they were all ex explicitly working on this or if maybe they were working on some other books and their stuff got repurposed for this. In any case, there were a lot of folks involved. You know, that's a good question to ask you right now. Someone like you has been in the field, certainly, of RPG creations and many different things like that. How does that work when there's so many people involved? Do you get, like, certain credentials listed somewhere? Or, like, does it list everybody? How does that Yeah, anybody work? that works on a book is going to get credited from the proofreaders to the playtesters to the editors to the writers to the developers. It usually doesn't explicitly say which part each person worked on. So generally, if you go and ask somebody, they'll be more than happy to say, yeah, I wrote this chapter or I wrote this section. It's got to be like a light flex type situation. A little bit. A little, little bit. bit. Okay, cool. What this book really does, if you look at the Pathfinder 2nd Edition book, chapter 8 of that book kind of gives you about a half page on a lot of the different regions around the inner sea. There's a couple of continents that it focuses on. And this really expands on that section. I think there were 10 different regions that it briefly touched on there. And each of those sections get 12 pages in here instead of the half page that they got in the core book. The book opens up with a brief intro and a discussion about the game world. And it does talk about a lot of different parts because Galarian, honestly, is a very big area. There's lots of spaces for adventure. But then it focuses in on two continents Avistan and Garund, and I'm probably mangling those pronunciations. Uh, Classic manglage. Yeah, there you go. So again, this is the same world as in first edition of Pathfinder, Galarian. Now they call it the Lost Omens setting guide, but Lost Omens isn't a place, it's a time. So there's different ages of Galarian's history, and Lost Omens is the era when both first and second edition Pathfinder take place. Sounds intense. Yeah, I mentioned it was about 12 pages for each of these 10 different parts of the world. Of those 12 pages, about 80% of that or so is all just setting info. Uh, really, if you wanted to adapt this game world to use with a different setting, it'd be really turnkey because you've got a ton of material right there that you can just move forward with so that you could very easily, if you didn't want to play using the Pathfinder rules in the Lost Omens Galarian setting. There's lots of material here for you to do that, which I really enjoyed because, you know, if I'm reading a setting book, I want to learn the setting. I'm not usually in it as much for the rules that are specific to it. Rules material tended to be one to two pages. It was generally some backgrounds for characters who were coming from those areas, and then also a couple of items that were specific to those regions, you know, often things that had cultural ties. The different areas that they talked about, so Absalom and the Starstone Isle is the first one that's kind of the center of the world. It's a big city uh, in Starfinder Absalom Station comes from that same place, right? So the big deity behind the era is 
focused on that area specifically. After that, it talks about the Broken Lands, which kind of has a strong post-apocalyptic feel. There's civil wars going on. There's a demonic invasion. And I really like the idea that there was a spaceship that had crashed there in the past. And so that opens up a whole nother kind of exploration opportunity for the players to get into. Is it like uh, Mad Max vibes over there? Uh, definitely, but with a fantasy feel. Oh, nice. Yeah. Dangerous. Absolutely. Uh, then you've got the Eye of Dread, which is a land of a lot of undead armies that are in conflict and that are you know, in conflict with the living as well. The Golden Road, which is kind of has a ancient Egypt feel, if you want to get into that kind of era. And it talks about the high seas, which are, you know, your oceanic regions. And those are really set up for two big themes. The first is pirate stories because, hey, high adventure on the seas. Sure, you got to have piracy. Duh. And then after that, they also get into undersea kingdoms. So if you want to do an Atlantean style tale or a story about sea elves or lost civilizations far beneath the ocean, you've got the tools you need for that there as well. Uh, after that are the impossible lands which are a very high magic area where there's lots of things that don't make any sense without magic. And it talks about the fallout of the arcane wars that happened in that area. Uh, next up, we have the Mwangi Expanse, which is a tropical jungle area. If you want to get into themes of exploration and tribal cultures that are there and ancient civilizations. Uh, then there's Old Keliax which is kind of a decaying evil empire. The Saga Lands, which are set up for adventures of Vikings and Northmen. And then finally, the Shining Kingdom, which is kind of your hope for the future. That's the area where you see like the promise of, you know, what could come. Oh. Yeah. So there's a lot of different themes you've got there. You can bring characters in from any of these regions using the backgrounds that I mentioned, or you could use adventures in any of them. Of course, Paizo is great about providing adventure path opportunities that explore a lot of these different places, but there's plenty of material here for you to get started if your adventure wants to go into a different place, or if you want to pull a character into the campaign who's come from a distant land, you've got all the tools you need for that. So I can see where there'd be a strong appeal both for players who want to know more about the world setting and for the game master who wants to find other parts of the world to explore. Again, this is a very manageably sized book. It's only 136 pages, so I find it to be very approachable for somebody who wants to get a handle on the setting and quickly dive into it. It is full color. It's up to Paizo's pretty high standards for some great artwork throughout, uh, and it is $37 in hardcover. We do have this on the shelf up here at Immortals Inc. or available through immortalsinc.com, so stop in, take a look, and see if... Uh, this might be the thing to convince you to try Pathfinder 2nd Edition, or if this might be the world setting you've been looking for for use with another system. Another thing that's worth mentioning, Paizo has decided they're going to roll at least one of their adventure paths out for D&D 5th Edition. That might also be a motivation, even if you're a hardcore D&D guy who's not interested in Pathfinder, check out a book like this so you can get a handle on that world before those new adventures start to come out for it. Beautifully said. And what would you or have you uh, chosen for your setting in one of these uh, sessions? You know, for me, I think the high seas would be really compelling because I want to get out on those ships and see what might be out there in those tiny little islands to find that might have been forgotten in the past ages. Cannonball. There Cannonball you go. Cannonball fetish, basically. There you go. We all have them. All right. Till next time, folks. Good gaming. Later, guys.